south of the United States lies the Republic of Mexico. In recent years, many Americans have discovered that it's a delightful vacation land. Their visits, however, are usually confined. The northwestern coast is a relatively unknown land to most Americans. Northern Mexico is an arid semi-desert region, which is a continuation of our southwestern by the long, narrow peninsula of Baja California. Baja California means Lower California. It is well named since actually an extension of the mountain ranges of our own California. It stretches for 750 miles south of the border as a rugged, barren desert country with little water or green grass. Most of the coastal towns have no roads at all. Their highway is the sea. The warm waters of the Pacific also provide excellent fishing grounds for tuna, swordfish, and yellowtail. The most important coastal town of Baja California is Ensenada, situated on Todos Santos Bay approximately 60 miles south of the United States border. Ensenada is the metropolitan center for a large agricultural community, as well as the government administrative center for Baja California. The principal industrial establishment is the fish cannery on the waterfront. Fish for the cannery are supplied by the deep sea fishing fleet which makes the broad bay its home. American fishing boats also use this port as a base of operation. Mingled among the fishing boats are yachts which belong to American visitors. The tourist trade is a major industry in Ensenada. Many tourists drive down to Ensenada from San Diego over a good highway. Attracted by the foreign atmosphere and the smart shops which offer beautiful hand-woven wool blankets and fine Mexican silverwork. For those who wish to spend a weekend or a vacation here, Ensenada offers luxurious resort accommodations such as this palatial seaside hotel. South of Ensenada are the mountains, waterless, rocky, and barren. Many of these mountains are rich in mineral deposits, including gold, silver, and copper, but the absence of water and the lack of transportation has prevented any extensive mining. Nestled in among the rocky peaks are a few sheltered valleys, such as this one at Santa Tomas, where deep wells and irrigation bring out the wonderful fertility of the desert soil. Under the watchful eyes of men whose knowledge of grape growing has been handed down for generations, these vineyards produce magnificent purpose. From these grapes are made fine wines, which are famous throughout Mexico and the United States. 350 miles south of the American border is Turtle Bay. Here in the little town of San Bartolomo is located at Lobster and Abalone Cannery. Lobsters are caught in wooden traps set in the little coves along the rocky coast. These lobsters, which are really a type of crayfish, are found along the entire coast of Baja California. Pony fishermen find the large shellfish clinging to the rocks on the bottom of the bay. They're gathered by divers equipped with modern diving suits of rubber, fitted with a heavy metal helmet. The water here is about 20 feet deep, but it's so clean that the diver can easily see to work. He is supplied with air through hoses that connect his helmet to a motor-driven air pump. The diver puts the abalone into a net, which is pulled up by the men in the boat. Each abalone furnishes a large piece of rich white meat. The insides of the shells are a beautiful iridescent color. 
150 miles below Turtle Bay is the great harbor of Magdalena Bay. This is reputed to be the finest natural harbor on the Pacific coast, but the lack of fresh water has prevented its commercial development. In fact, the single community on the bay is a tiny settlement on the eastern shore. The only fresh water in the area is found on one of the offshore islands. The local water carrier brings it from the island to the village in a small sailboat. Since the island is 20 miles away, he's able to make only one trip each day. The water, which is not too clean and has a peculiar taste, is transported in casks and old oil drums and sold to the townspeople for approximately one peso per cask. The people of the village make their living principally by fishing. The waters of Magdalena Bay are a famous commercial fishing ground, but the local fishermen usually fish from small boats or hand lines and catch only enough for themselves. Any fish which they do not need for themselves are dried and taken down the coast to be sold. Their homes are little wooden huts built on the beach close to the water without any of the conveniences which we consider as necessary. Because fresh water is so limited and expensive, the laundry is usually done with salt water, sometimes in wooden tubs and sometimes directly in the ocean. Lumber also is scarce and the houses are built largely from driftwood and planks salvaged from shipwrecked vessels. Between fishing trips, there's little to do and the men spend many pleasant hours sitting in the warm sun playing dominoes which is one of the most popular games in Mexico. Even in such a small village, the school is an important place. It's just a one-room schoolhouse and all grades have the same teacher. The teacher is a graduate of a special government school and has been trained to teach not only reading, writing, and arithmetic, but also health and hygiene, good citizenship, and group activities. During the morning recess, the whole school chooses up sides and plays baseball. Baseball is as much a national game in Mexico as it is in the United States. At the tip of Baja, California, is Cape San Lucas and the town of San Lucas. Here there is a little more rain, and the desert gives way to a country which supports a sparse vegetation of mesquite and hardy shrubs. Most of the rain falls during the late summer and early fall. Because of the long, dry months between rains, the trees are small and scattered. There's a fish cannery at San Lucas, and most of the people are either fishermen or work in the cannery. The post office is combined with the telegraph station. And here, the postmistress, who operates them both, also maintains a government weather station in the attractive garden behind her home. Cooking is done on wood-burning stoves, and the hunt for firewood is never-ending. This load will be sold in the market to those who do not have time to collect their own. One good customer for firewood is the village baker. The little sweet cakes which he's making in his outdoor oven will be offered for sale in the general store. Water for the town is obtained from shallow public wells located near the dry riverbed. While these wells supply water all the year round, during the dry season the water in them becomes very low and there is sufficient for only the most important needs. At San Lucas, automobiles again make their reappearance. This old car is used to bring vegetables into town from the nearby farming community of San Jose. The townspeople are trading dried fish to the farmers in exchange for the vegetables.
The sleepy little town marks the last of 700 miles of wild desert and empty beaches. For at Cape San Lucas, the peninsula of Baja California ends abruptly in tremendous cliffs standing in majestic solitude, a fitting monument to a lonesome, forgotten land. <laughs> 